I am Father Felix de Souza, associated with the National Domestic Workers Movement in India. And for the last 35 years, we have functioned under the CBCI, that's Catholic Bishop Conference of India, the Labor Commission, as an expression of the concern of the church for the marginalized. Right at the start, let us hear the voices of these domestic workers during the pandemic, the voices also of the employer. Towards the end, I will pinpoint what efforts have gone in at the time of the pandemic, as well as what the struggles were. Hear the voices. We find it difficult cleaning, sweeping, washing. We just cannot do without them. It has been difficult to take care of my home and children. These domestic workers would do that. My madam is understanding. Now they will know my value. My madam wants me. Now the building society is not allowed. As I said, I belong to the National Domestic Workers Movement. And it was created out of a vision by Sister Jan De Vos, who is considered a pioneer in the work of domestic workers as part of the church's apostolate. It has its national office in Mumbai and operates in 16 of the states in India with a workforce of para-social workers numbering almost 250. I must say right at the start, that there are other groups or movements in India associated in different ways for the cause of domestic workers. At some time, we have networked for crucial issues. This National Domestic Workers Movement does not supply domestic workers to employers, no. But rather, our main work is to see how we can organize these domestic workers, empower them, work towards rehabilitating them and integrate them as well as look after the abused domestic workers, giving them proper assistance and taking up their cause at the legal level. Children in domestic work, the women workers, the trafficking, the migrants, all these become the agenda of the National Domestic Workers Movement. It is said there are 67 million domestic workers over the age of 15 in the world, 80% being women. In India, we don't have the exact numbers, but it is estimated that 7 to 10 million domestic workers exist. What is our spiritual motivation? Very briefly, the Exodus experience. Yahweh says, I have heard the cries of my people. Jesus says in the gospel, I have come to give the good news to set free the oppressed. Various popes have spoken about the church's ap apostolate to workers. Just to quote Pope John Paul II, in his encyclical Laborem Exercens, he mentions about the rights, the dignity, the struggles, the pain suffered by migrants, the unorganized, and he concludes by saying how we need to kind of organize them, integrate them. Pope Francis also has speak, spoken about the struggles of workers. Sometimes he has also brought in the struggles of the domestic workers. Now, who are these people? I've categorized them into five. 
you will see that on the screen first and foremost they are the vulnerable women in the slums and pavements of the city or the town often single parents whose husbands are alcoholic or they have abandoned them these women go from house to house doing the work of cleaning cooking washing etc one set the second set they are the young girls and boys who have left their villages or tribal areas in the hope of finding better environment in the city or town there are the push factors because of poverty from the village and the pull factor of the glamour of the city that brings them here the third category they are the children brought from the rural areas either trafficked or recruited by agents their parents are unable to provide for their basic needs and hence they land up in the city or the town mainly at the railway station we network with the railway child line offices so that these children found there on the platforms are given to us and then we look after them fourth they are the live in workers living in the houses of the employers they are totally dependent on their employers the fifth category they are the men and women who leave india after having worked in the city and the town they go to the middle east the west southeast asia in order to get a better income to support their family may i say that very often they are disappointed in these countries there are no laws for them no one to support them when they are exploited and it's a horrible situation that they get into now what could be the issues concerning them i once again put five points here you will be seeing certain visuals as well as a person domestic worker speaking mera naam maria alex lorix hai santa cruz to akola pipeline gaon devi indranagar slum area se main aati hu aur main bachpan 15 saal se hi kaam kar rahi hu shaadi ke baad se hi hum काम कर रही हूँ और हम दोनों मियाँ बीबी साथ में मैनेज करते हैं घर को और उसके बाद मैं स्कूल में बच्चों को छोड़ के मैं काम पे जाती हूँ उसके बाद मैं अपना घर भी संभालती हूँ उसके बाद से जो अभी मार्च से कोरोना आया है जब से मुझे काम नहीं है क्योंकि वहाँ पे उनको डर लगता है आएंगे तो हमको कोरोना हो सकता है इसके लिए अभी तक मुझे किसी ने बुलाया नहीं फर्स्ट दे डू ऑल द डर्टी वर्क एंड आई पुट दैम इन इन्वर्टेड कॉमा of the house but they are the necessary work and yet they are looked down upon and treated as less than human their struggles is a story of its own they are denied a just wage no benefits offered to them services terminated according to the whims and fancies of the employer no work contract you may say i am doing my best for the domestic worker I have an office in Masgon the national office and so many people come every day telling us of their sad stories of how they are beaten how they are ill treated wages not given they are thrown out secondly the issue they are uprooted from their rural setting and are at a loss in a city or a town which has its own culture they fall for it they become vulnerable third they are the victims of recruitment agents who offer them promises and present a rosy picture but they sell these girls or boys to the employers who treat them not as servants but as slaves some of them land up at the red light area fourth since many of them are not very educated they are taken advantage of by the employers and furthermore these workers do not enjoy any legal protection 
many are the victims of sexual ex exploitation. You must come to the office, as I said earlier, to believe what I say, that it is really heartrending to see them say that how a hot iron has been placed on their face, a rod pushed under, all kinds of torture. We have engaged in legal battles. We have lost because the other side, the employer, has also got a very good lawyer and they find loopholes. We know we, we might lose, but nevertheless to give confidence to these uh, vulnerable people or exploited people, we fight their legal battle. Five, there is a stigma associated with being a domestic worker. Abroad, the domestic worker comes in a car, does his or her work and is treated like any one of the rest. It is part of all the other work culture. Not so in India. Domestic work is considered the lowest, the menial job and thereby the dignity that should have been placed for their work is almost absent, almost absent. What does this movement do as its activities, you may ask. I am Sadhana Vinod Morris. I have been working for 17 years and I am not sure that 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 I am आणि मी महाराष्ट्र राज्य घर कामगार संघटने शी जुड़ा गेपासन आम चे हक्क का ते आम समझले गए आम्मी ज्यादर मैडम शी कस बोल कि सुट्टा मगण ये सग घाबरायो पन संघटने से जुड़ापासन आम चे हक्क आम्मी आम्मी बोलू शको सुट्टा मगू शको फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट वी आर एंगेज इन द कॉज ऑफ डिग्निटी ऑफ डोमेस्टिक वर्क एंड डिग्निटी टू द डोमेस्टिक वर्कर it is a matter of great satisfaction for us that over the last 35 years, having started from one small center in Mumbai, we have moved to many states in India and have been responsible for raising the concerns of these domestic workers at the International Labor Organization, which have put forth their recommendations for all the governments in the world. We have had support from others. One example, the Belgium king and queen have great regard for domestic work and domestic workers. And they support us a lot even financially. Whenever the Belgium king and the queen come to India or Mumbai for some other work, they always make it a point to tell me that organize a program of domestic workers or for half an hour to one hour, we need to interact with them. You will see a picture here as a background of one such meeting. They have come at different times to Dada, where I was, then in Namboli, where I had been, and then now in Vakola recently they have come. So the, the support comes from other sources also. Secondly, the movement does strive to establish a just wage and see that sufficient benefits go to the domestic worker. In this regard, campaigns have been held in all the states of India. And I must tell you that concessions have been given by the state governments, not the law, but concessions. Third, we have strived to introduce time and again in the parliament a national domestic workers bill, which could have become a law. We have not succeeded. We have done it from 1977, I think. But this struggle carries on. We want to put that as a bill because then the movement will have some teeth when they fight for the cause of the domestic workers. Four, all the centers have been involved in crisis intervention. There's trauma, we need to counsel them, we need to be with them when they are thrown out. Also, we advise them when they make mistakes, when they have their limitations, we tell them if they have done something wrong. Fifth, many leadership programs and skills upgrading training programs have been held 
for the empowerment of the domestic workers to give them enough confidence so that they have a voice of their own. We feel very happy when they stand up and speak not only at the national level but one such worker went at the international level and spoke. Many employers do present certain statements which could be considered half-truths or myths. Someone will say, why are they complaining? It is better for them to have half a loaf than no loaf at all. But I say this logic does not hold good. Can we go to the red light area and tell them that it is better you are looked after here and getting some money rather than in the village where you are not getting anything? So this logic does not hold. Half a loaf is better than no loaf at all. Secondly, they are lazy, they are irresponsible. Quite a few employers tell us. I must say, there are good and not so good employers, good and not so good leaders, good and not so good parents, good and not so good children, and so good and not so good domestic workers. Some will be lazy, some will be irresponsible, but others are hardworking and they are responsible. Third, someone will say they are not loyal, they are ungrateful. I personally find them very loyal, quite few of them, because they have looked after the children of the employer and the aged parents of the employers. They looked after them as if they were their own. They could be ungrateful, not satisfied because of uh, uh, the allowances that they get and they are not very happy with them. Fourth, you may say, see these domestic workers, it comes in the papers, they are robbers, they are murderers. Let me tell you, I've done a little study on all these cases. In most of them, if not all, these are not actually domestic workers. These are robbers. These are thieves. They come in the guise as domestic worker only to rob these people, their employer. So they are not the domestic worker, but they have entered the scene as domestic worker only for their own benefit. Some other employee will say, nowadays they are becoming very demanding. Maybe we should be proud that they have a voice, they become demanding. We feel proud when our children have a voice, they become demanding. We love them. Now, what do you, we expect you to do? That's my last point. Again, five things on the screen. The first one is the mindset of the people needs to be addressed. That domestic workers are human beings. They have their ups and downs, their joys and sorrows, their struggles, their limitations. The golden rule in all religion is treat others as you, you would want them to treat you. So let's be kind to them. Secondly, in many parishes, there are the community centers. The community centers could engage in activities of organizing them having skills training program, helping them to gain conf confidence, being helpful to them in getting their documents. You will see visuals here of how the community centers have helped out in big ways and small. They have done all of these and we are proud when they do this for the sake of the domestic workers. Third, cultural gatherings are a big hit with the domestic workers. Some parish cells and associations have this program like the Christmas get together or the Karam festival. It binds them together, invites them to not lose their connection, their roots and it helps them build their own confidence and their own identity. Fourth, 
you may be treating the domestic workers adequately well. But do report to us if in the neighborhood you hear about children being employed or you see them or you hear about violence towards women domestic workers in our office. Many of these people could be saved, domestic workers could be saved, children could be saved only because someone has reported to us. Do your duty because you may be doing, treating them well but others may not be so. And the fifth one is that during the pandemic, I said I will conclude with that, many have helped out, schools, children, colleges, was agencies and groups have helped out. We have seen the plight of the domestic workers, not having their jobs here, wanting to run to their villages or their uh, rural destinations because they have been stopped because of the fear that they could bring in the coronavirus. But many have helped them. And this kind of uh, intervention of the society, of the groups, must continue. So wherever you are, if you get an opportunity to help out in the domestic workers' cause, please do, do so. And the last line, I will say, the movement has a dream. The workers have a song. The movement has a dream. A dream that one day they will have a voice, they will be treated well, they will have a dignity and all will be well with the domestic workers. The domestic workers themselves have a song that they will not give up. Hum honge kaam yaab. God bless. Good evening, my dear sisters and brothers. Let us sign ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When one thinks of professions and careers, one always aspires for great things. Ask a child or a youth what they want to become, and they will say, a doctor lawyer, engineer, chartered accountant, a professor. The list can go on and on. But no one ever aspires to be a servant. No child will ever say, I want to be a domestic worker. No young girl will ever say, I want to be a handmaid. Yet, Mary aspired for all of this, to be the handmaid of the Lord. In so doing, she exalted all domestic work, household helps, servant work. As we welcome her son in our midst, let us remember that Jesus too washed feet. May our prayer and song always be, Lord, make me like you. Lord, make me like you. Please make me like you. You are a servant. Make me one too. Oh Lord, won't you give me your strength every day to build a community to follow your way whoever among you desires to be great must be the servant of all for even the son of 
of man came to serve and give his life for the world. Lord, make me like you. Please make me like you. You are a servant. Make me one too. Oh Lord, won't you give me your strength every day to build a community to follow your way? You call me your master and Lord, so I am. Be To set an example for all of you To serve as an of love Lord, make me like you Please make me like you You are a servant strength every day to build a community to follow your We are all called to be servants and handmaids of God. But how does one go about achieving this? There is simply one way. Surrender. This is a word many of us are frightened of today. For us, surrender means to give up. Often it conjures up the image of war, when an army has overpowered and defeated another. The victor crushes the will of the other and then takes the defeated as prisoners of war. This, however, is not the way God asks us to surrender. Our loving Father doesn't want prisoners of war but servants whom he calls friends. To put ourselves in the hands of God 
is to surrender ourselves to a friend. Far from overpowering us, God seeks to fulfill our deepest desires. Desires that we often do not even know exist. Mary experienced this when she said yes to God. It was confusing, unclear, frightening, having consequences unknown. Yet, what she did know was that in saying yes to God, she said yes even to her deepest self. May we look upon her son and give him our best extension of friendship and service. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer
servants of this world often fall prey to injustice, exploitation, corruption and objectification. They have to put in a lot of hard labor for meager wages and non-existent benefits. Let us offer all such people to the Lord. Let us surrender them before the Lord, especially if they are in our own employees, our homes, our offices, or our institutions. May we always remember that the servants of the kingdom of God are protective by the love, peace, and justice of God himself. May we extend such a friendship and service to anyone and everyone we meet. Tanto mergo sacramento Venedemur cernui Et anticum documentu No voce dad ritui Restet fide supplementu Sensum defectui Genitori genitoque Laus e jubilatio Salus honor vertus quoque Sit et benedictio Procedenti abut roque Comparsit laudatio Let us pray. O God, in this wonderful sacrament, have left us the memorial of your passion. Grant that we may so reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, and that the taste of the fruit of your redemption may ever be within us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. O sacrament most holy
sacrament most holy O sacrament divine All praise and all thanksgiving Be every moment The Divine Praises Blessed be God, blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ through God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. Gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. You were chosen by the Father. You were chosen for the Son You were chosen from all women And for women, the shining one Gentle woman, quiet light Morning star, so strong and bright A Gentle mother Peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love, teach us wisdom, teach us love, teach us wisdom, teach us love.